Hello guys, so we are going to see today Coked Bar in Pure Bending uh, I am Parth Parikh, who have prepared this PPT and this subject is called Theory of Plasticity and Elasticity We are going to see this uh, topic today So, what is bending? What is pure bending here? So, we will go to the next slide Pure bending is a condition of a stress where a bending moment is applied to a beam without the simultaneous presence of axial shear or torsional forces so it is simply saying that you are applying just a moment without any shear forces axial forces and or it is not ideal actually you know, any mass any particular member or thing will be having a mass that mass itself will is a loading with to it so it will obviously generate some shear forces and all forces except bending so it is an idealized condition so it is not uh, <clears throat> generally seen in the practical world but uh, uh, we are assuming it to derive some formula based on that so there are many assumptions on it and kinematics of pure bending we are also going to see in a pure bending the axial lines bend from a circumferential line and transverse lines remain straight and become radial lines uh, you will understand it after you see the figure axial lines do not uh, extend or contact from a neutral surface that's obvious so assumptions made in your theory of pure bending is the material of a beam is homogeneous and isotropic young's modulus of velocity is same in tension and compression Con transverse condition which we plane before yeah, sorry transverse section which were plane before bending remains plane after bending also beam is initially straight and all non-generational filaments bend into circular arcs with common center of curvature uh, actually it's different for curved beam it is for general normal uh, beams the radius of curvature is large as compared to dimension of cross section each layer of a beam is free to expand or contact independently of a layer above or below it so this was the slide talking about pure bending now a circular bar this is our circular bar as you can see in this figure uh, a curved bar with a constant narrow rectangular section and a circular axis bend in the plane of curvature by couples m applied at the ends so here you can see the both ends are applied with moments and it is not a deformed shape it is actual bar which, which shape is like that only we are applying externally this moments this M and this one M so yeah, so in this uh, bar the top most element if we take it will be in compression and what the most element will be, we are seeing it it will be in tension so it, we are taking this problem in not in Cartesian coordinate system we are taking it it is it's in polar coordinate system so are going to next slide so for solving this kind of problem to get radial stress uh, circumferential cell stress and shear stress we have to define a stress function and this stress function phi is equal to a log r b r square log r plus c r square plus d is a stress function for uh, problems of symmetrical stress distribution it is a general uh, function for it so we are using it uh, so we are having three boundary condition which will define our problem so three boundary conditions are here you can see the first boundary condition says that sigma r the radial stress for r is equal to a and b is zero why because uh, convex, convex and concave boundaries of the bar are free from normal stresses that is uh, that, that means no normal stresses are applied due to movement on concave and convex boundaries of this bar element and the second boundary condition says that that sigma theta into dr means the smallest part of uh, smallest part of uh, circumferential stress with respect to the dr means the radius of it will be zero the normal stress at the ends gives the rise to couple m only there are no extra forces except m 
it is saying like that and this second condition is saying like that we are which i said this is for the <clears throat> there are no extra forces and this says that there is only movement applying at the ends and similarly we can also understand that the uh, no tangential forces applied in the boundary the Stauss uh, r theta is says that no tangential forces are applied so no shear forces are there so now moving on we are having three equations we have to find this three equation ultimately sigma r sigma theta and tau r theta sigma r is uh, radial uh, stress sigma theta is circumferential stress and tau r theta is uh, shear stress so by the stress function it is defined that sigma r if you want to find then you have to derivate for stress function with respect to r partial derivative and multiply it with 1 upon r now for finding sigma theta we have to <coughs> derivate the stress function with respect to r two times partial derivative so that's why it is given del here and sigma theta r it's actually zero for this kind of problem so after putting first boundary condition in sigma r for r is equal to a and b we will have a function actually first to find first sigma r we have to put stress function which is this stress function a we have to put in this r sigma r we will get something in terms of a b c and log then we will put uh, r is equal to a and b in it so we will have these two conditions you will easily get it you just do one two step in it you will get it so these two conditions sorry this two equation we will have which, which i'm calling them d so now second boundary condition sigma theta for sigma theta we are same similarly we are doing it and after simplifying we will have the this equation e this e equation is similarly looking like the previous equation we are having b you can see it a by b b into b plus 2b log b plus 2cb you can see here a by uh, a square plus b in uh, plus b into 1 plus log 2a plus 2c actually if we simplify this E equation we will get similar equation like D. So comparing E and D we can see that it is satisfying and it also says that the force at the end are reductible to couple. Whichever forces are we are applying it's only a couple. It is again uh, telling us that. So our boundary conditions are referring back to us. We can say like that. <coughs> now to have a bending couple equal to M following equation must be fulfilled which is our third boundary condition this one is our third boundary condition so we are putting all stress function in it with respect to and integrate it with respect to a and b because we are having a circular arc with uh, with radius r and it is extremum con concave and convex boundaries are a and b that's why we are integrating with a, a to b and with respect to r so we will uh, with we will put stress function phi is equal to the values we are which are taken in a first equation equation number a and we are integrated and we will get uh, uh, that integration will with respect to putting this values a and b we will have is equal to m the moment applied this slide says that and now putting such function in g we will get this kind of equation this is a stress function after uh, derivating it and integrate it with it we can see that here after derivating with respect to r square sorry derivating two times with the respect to r and integrating with respect to a and b so we'll get this kind of function at the end of those uh, operations and with respect to h and d h is this formula and D is the D was the formula you can say after which we obtained after first boundary condition this formula T both are we can with respect to sorry with with help of H and D we can find unknowns A B and C because there are two equations in D there was two equations and 
in H it is one equation so three unknowns and three equations are there so we can easily find the constants a B and C so their values will be uh, will be coming like this you can do the all the operation and get these values so here minus 4 m by n a square b square log b by a for b minus 2 m by n b square minus a square for c is equal to m by n b square minus a square plus 2 a sorry plus 2 uh, in bracket b square log b minus a square log a so we'll, you will wonder how why this n is coming this n is just for simplifying the equation the n's value is minus b square minus a square whole square minus 4ab square log b by a. it's kind of tedious one so we just put n instead of all this uh, two terms that's why we are putting it for simplification i just told it we are putting j this equation in i so we will getting this three values a b and c so directly putting a b and c's values in c equation c equation was this sigma r sigma theta and tau r theta if we put a b and c's equation in all this equation we will get the finally stress which is our unknown so for a curved bar in pure bending now we have derived the radial stress circumferential stress shear stress so Ultimately, we are having this equation. It will help in analyzing any kind of uh, circular bar, or you can say a normal bar also can be analyzed with respect to these conditions. Uh, normally, usually given in books, the strength of materials. If the depth of the bar B minus A is small in comparison with the radius of central axis B plus A by two, the same distribution as for the straight bar is usually assumed so 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 it's a useful equation you can analyze it and you can have the stress strain sorry you can have the these two uh, stress and shear thank you thank you for watching